If you look up at the sky any night and it's dark enough and it's clear so you can see the stars, there's a good chance that you're actually going to see a shooting star, this is another name for meteors. And on any night of the year, you should be able to see about four an hour. These are tiny, tiny grains of dust, about the size of a grain of sand. And they burn up in the atmosphere. They burn up because they're traveling really, really fast, about 20 kilometers a second or 45,000 miles an hour. Actually, to say they burn up isn't true. They don't burn. They get so hot because of the friction as they pass through the atmosphere that they completely vaporise and they just vanish in a puff of heat and light. At certain times of the year, you might catch a meteor storm or a meteor shower when they've got, you've got a high chance of seeing maybe as many as 100 shooting stars an hour. The Perseid meteor shower is caused by debris from a comet called Swift Tuttle. This comet was discovered by two separate astronomers independently in 1862, Lewis Swift and Horace Tuttle. And they calculated that this comet has an orbit of about 133 years. So if it was close by in 1862, the next time it was close by the sun was in 1995. Each time the comet comes close to the sun, it grows a tail. The tail always points away from the sun because of the radiation pressure. The pressure of light coming from the sun blows the dust away. Over time, the dust builds up and becomes smeared out along the entire orbit of the comet, forming a ring. Now, the Earth's orbit around the sun is going about like this. So, you know, it's going like this. And so once a year, at the same time each year, Earth goes through the dust left from the tail of Comet Swift Tuttle. And that's when we get the Perseid meteor showers. Now they're called the Perseids because they look as if they're coming from a single point in the night sky. And they look as if they're coming from where Perseus is, the constellation. And so these meteors all sort of trace back and look as if they're coming from a single point called the Radiant in Perseus. Now, in the northern hemisphere, that's in the northeastern part of the sky. So if you if you look out to the northeast, that's where Perseus is, and that's where you should be able to see as if these uh, uh, meteors are coming from there. So what equipment do you need to view the Perseids? You don't really need very much. You certainly don't need a telescope and you don't need binoculars. You need to be comfortable and you need to be lying down or in a sun lounge or something like that. So you need a blanket to keep yourself warm, friend maybe, a cup of tea. You need clear skies, you need it to be dark, you need to be looking towards the northeast, and you need to be very patient. So, good luck and happy meteor hunting.